Today we're talking about a new paradigm in medicine. A paradigm of dentists and physicians working together for the good of the patient. I'm joined today by two of the most foremost experts in their respective fields. Dr. Mercola is the founder of Mercola.com, the most visited natural health website in the world with 20 million page views a month. Dr. Lena Garcia is a holistic dentist and practicing holistic dentistry for 25 years. She has written numerous articles and is the author of the soon to be published book, Are Your Teeth Making You Sick? Holistic Dentistry in the 21st Century. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Dr. Garcia, you wrote this book on holistic dentistry. You classify yourself as a holistic dentist. Tell us what exactly is holistic dentistry and how does it differ from conventional dentistry? Holistic dentistry is when the practitioner can understand the connection between the mouth and the rest of the body. It's to understand that the mouth is an integral part of the whole body system. So in, in our practice, we choose materials and procedures that are going to support the best healing in the body instead of creating obstacles. There are a lot of procedures in dentistry that will create obstacles for a patient's health. So a holistic mindset, a holistic practitioner is the one that who totally integrate the mouth with the rest of the body, knowing exactly that the same blood supply and the fatics that goes around the teeth, the gums, it goes around the whole system. So that's what a holistic practitioner should be able to diagnose and help their patients. And Dr. Mercola, how would you describe holistic medicine and its connection with holistic dentistry? Well, it's an important component. Uh, you, it's difficult to achieve optimal health and wellness without paying attention to what's happened to the mouth because there's been such a travesty and a perversion of, of uh, what we know is optimal health with, uh, with respect to the mouth. I mean, they're, they're using mercury amalgams which actually are, you, the dentist in most states cannot tell a patient it has mercury in it without risk of losing his license or getting a severe penalty from his local me uh, dental board. Uh, and then that's an issue, and then you have root canals, and of course it's the fluoride controversy. So there's been significant issues that have been really devastating our health overall and specifically the health of the, the mouth and then when you start destroying that and, and putting infections in there they can have profound implications on the health and unless you could have the healthiest lifestyle but unless you address that in many people's cases it's certainly not everyone but in many people's cases it, it could be the critical link and you just can't improve your health without addressing those issues you mentioned mercury and i wanted to talk about that on your website you talk a little bit about a terrible experience you had having your own mercury amalgams removed mm -hmm. and uh, how you almost lost both of your kidneys because of that. Well, I didn't lose the kidneys. The, the, uh, the, my kidney function was progressively deteriorating and, and, it, and uh, I think I've compensated for it now, but uh, it seems to have been precipitated by uh, the actually watching 60 Minutes, which is one of my favorite shows, been on for 40 years, and they had a, 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 a segment in the mid-90s that exposed this issue and made people aware of it, and you know, that's one of the things they do well, and that be, it was in my consciousness at that point, so I went to my local dentist, who was actually um, a, an elder on the board of the church I was attending, and uh, was high integrity and really competent, but he didn't knew nothing about biological dentistry. So he proceeded to remove the 15 or 20 mercury amalgam fillings I had without any precautions, and I just dumped loads of mercury in my system. And I think from that time onwards, my kidneys started to progressively uh, deteriorate. And I had to do a lot of sophisticated uh, implementations of natural medicine to help recover them. Um, so uh, that you have to be careful. So even with good intentions, you know, you can go from the frying pan to the fire if you don't know what you're doing. You're seeing an inex see an inexperienced. Um, dentist who's well-intentioned and highly skilled in conventional techniques but doesn't understand how the body works. Well that brings up a good point. Since then I know you found Dr. Garcia and you use her as your and your family's dentist as well as you refer your patients to her. How would you recommend to a physician out there or a patient out there to go about finding a dentist they can trust? Well I think we have some resources on our site. There's a, a number of different ways. There's a, IAOMT, which is International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology. I think you just type in IAOMT on the web, you can find there's a link. Then there's also DAMS, which is the Dental Mercury Malcolm or Dental Mothers for, for DAMS, D A M S. It's, I'm not sure what the uh, acronym is for, but it's another resource. And then you can always contact 
the, my favorite recommendation is to go to the health food store in your community, a good one, and several of them ideally. Um, some communities it's not possible, but you can go there and ask the store owner and the people who work there, that's a number of different employees, for who they recommend. And typically, because it's sort of a network, it's like the social networking you know, without the internet, you know, the, the old type social networking. And they will develop, you soon if you do that work, and it takes some time and effort, but it's worth it, and you'll develop a consensus in that community who is, who the community thinks is the best one. Because even though they may be on these lists, you know, they may, they may have their faults, they're only human. So, um, you know, you want, you want the recommendations of other individuals who visited that person are very happy with their services. Well, Dr. Garcia, tell us a little bit about if someone comes to you, what are the options, what are the alternatives to mercury amalgam? Well, mercury is not a, a, a choice. I mean, it's a very toxic material. It should not be put in anybody's mouth. But once you are missing a part of the tooth due to decay or fracture, you have to take into consideration the durability and the biocompatibility of the material. So uh, in reality, nothing is good as your natural tooth. So then we do have to uh, utilize nutrition and good oral habits to really, because they are the key for good teeth and good health. But in our practice, we do use porcelain more towards the ceramic side because they seem to be more compatible with patients and the immune response from the patients tends to be better. So we, we, we tend to use more ceramic in our practice, porcelain. I want to talk a little bit about root canals, and in your book, you tell a story about a personal story about how you had root canals 20 years ago and the health problems you suffered because of that. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, well, when I was a teenager, I had my first root canal. And then years later, I had my second root canal. And I had a tendency to have those cysts in my eyelid that the only way I could solve was by surgically removing them. And once I, of course, got you know more educated and uh, uh, with the biological dentistry, I did remove my own two root canal teeth, and since then I never had any more of those you know cysts in my eyes or so. And I hear those stories over and over from patients. You know, over the years, Dr. McCall and I we have been um, you know following patients' histories, and that's why we're so aware of all of this. So patients will tell very similar stories. Uh, so in my case, was a, a infected tooth was a root canal that was chronically infected. There was no pain, no symptoms. In the x-ray, it was pretty clear. But that toxicity that was coming from those root canals were getting excess to the bloodstream and causing infections in different parts of my body. So by removing the root canals, then the, the infection, the, the cyst in the eye, they disappeared. And I hear stories like that all the time. So in my book, we have testimonials from patients that describe similar situations and many other situations. And uh, once they remove those obstacles, which are the root canals, like you know, mentioned, and you know, materials that cause immunological response, once we remove them, then you have a much better chance for the healing in that individual to take place with all the extra nutrition and all other things that we do. So it's, um, we gotta be aware of what the obstacles in the mouth. 